everyone and welcome to our online service again this morning. Um, just a few thoughts really to get us underway. Uh, a few days ago I was chatting to our Rachel over the phone um, and she was really uh, upset and anxious and worried about something um, and we chatted everything through and then towards the end of the conversation I just found myself saying uh, Rach, uh, trust me I'm your dad, we'll put it right, everything will be fine, it'll all be okay. And as I was saying the words even, I was uh, reminded of something Emily said uh, a few weeks ago and she was reminding us that we have a father in heaven. We have a heavenly dad who loves us, who cares for us, who wants the very best for us. Um, and I wondered if sometimes God maybe gets a little bit frustrated with us when we're anxious, when we're worried and, and upset uh, and God is saying, trust me, trust me, I'm your heavenly father, I'll sort it, it'll be okay. And one of the things I thought was, as um, earthly parents, it hurts doesn't it when our children are going through some things. Uh, and sometimes we, we can put it right. We can practically uh, solve the, the problem. Um, but there are times when we can't, and when we can't, all we can do then is love them and comfort them. But you know, we have a Heavenly Father who can do whatever He wants to do. And it says in the Bible that He can do exceedingly more than we can ask for or imagine. So maybe if that's you this morning, if you're going through a time of worry, of stress and of anxiety, maybe we can just hear that voice of our Heavenly Father who would say, trust me, I love you, I'll sort it, it'll all be fine, it'll be okay. And then when we hear those words, we can make that effort, that determined effort to hand over those issues, those problems to the best person there is to hand them over to. Our Heavenly Dad, who loves us, who cares for us, who wants the very best for us. Amen. So enjoy the rest of the service and have a great day. See you later. Perfect. 
everybody. Uh, it's great to come to this time in our service when we can uh, come around the table of the Lord and break bread together. Uh, I'm just going to ask Joy to read something from Acts uh, and then I'll just say a couple of things. Over to you Joy. Thank you. Good morning. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Thank you. You know, when you read that, it just gives you a beautiful picture in your mind of, of how the people there were. Uh, and of course, the, uh, the message of the gospel through Jesus was quite a new thing at the time. Uh, and a lot, of, a lot of exciting things were happening. But the part that really struck me about this passage was is that they met together in their homes to share the Lord's Supper. And, you know, again, I just want to stress that although we aren't together uh, in church, although uh, we will be meeting in church uh, actually today, later for, for pods uh, and for some fellowship. But it, it is this together. And, and I'm just at the moment really uh, conscious in my mind and praying much about the fact that we want to be together, but we're not. So what I'd like us to do this morning when we uh, take this uh, communion together is if we close our eyes and we can just almost imagine that we are together that we're just as one before the Lord this morning to share this communion. So let's just do that now. Let's just close our eyes and just imagine that we are actually together in church and we're praising the Lord and we're just sensing the beautiful presence of the Lord and the Holy Spirit is upon us. Uh, and you just enjoy that how the Lord can just pour out his spirit into you and into your heart and, and enjoy that, enjoy it. And so... Lord, I want to pray that as we come around your table this morning, Lord, that we get a great sense, Lord, that we are together, even though we're in our homes. And as we read there, they were in their homes, but they were sharing the, the Lord's Supper together. Lord, let us have that sense this morning that we are actually together. And let us feel, Lord, that, 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 that closeness, one between another, as we come around your table. I ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So we'll take the bread. And we'll remember, this is the body of Jesus that was broken and given for us. So we take it, give him thanks in your heart this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your wonderful name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you thanks this morning that it was your blood that was poured out for us, that washes us and cleanses us from our sins. And thank you, Lord, that it keeps on washing us. 
and it keeps on cleansing us from all our sins. Lord, how blessed we are today. So Lord, as we share this cup together this morning, we we'll give you thanks in our hearts. Praise your wonderful name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And so I pray that although we aren't together, we feel like we're together. That the Lord has brought us together through his spirit this morning. I pray God's richest blessing upon each one of you. And we look forward to the day that we rejoice together again, actually, in church. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Hi everyone. Let's start today's uh, message with a game of Simon Says. I'm not kidding. Everyone get up. Come on. Wherever you are, if you're nice and comfy, what a shame. Up you get. I'm not joking. Up you get. Right. Here we go. So, Simon Says, Star Jump. Simon Says, Pat your head. Simon says, skip on the spot. Simon says, have a wiggle. Anyone out of breath? Stand on one leg. Did I catch anyone out? I'll never know. But that is it. I promise you can have a sit now, get comfy again. And I'm going to explain now how the game of Simon Says links into the message today. See you soon. Simon Says is a game of following instruction and doing only what Simon says, whoever Simon is. Otherwise you lose and you have to sit the rest of the game out. So you're trying to do the right thing, follow the right instructions and you're trying not to do the wrong thing. Now there's a small link here, I think, <laughs> with how we can live our lives, especially as Christians. Now, God isn't going to disown us. He's not going to remove us from the game if we don't obey his commandments or follow his instructions. But there is a reason for his commandments and why his word exists, why he gave us his word. So he isn't a dictator. He's not a puppet master. He doesn't have this big ego and enjoy telling people what to do and bossing people about. And a lot of people can think that about God. And if you do, if you think or see God like that, then maybe you find you have a hard time obeying his word, following his life instructions. And I'm going to explain now why I think that is. So Jesus says in the book of John, let's have a read now, chapter 14, verses 15 to 17, and then a little bit further down in verse 21. I'm just going to read you now what Jesus says. And this is him talking to his disciples. If you love me, obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. Some translations, advocate is also known as comforter, or encourager, or counsellor. So I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. And in verse 21 he says, those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them. And I will love them and reveal myself to 
to each of them. So here we've got Jesus saying, if you love him, you'll obey his word. So I kind of wrote that down and think, to love someone, so to, to start with that, to love Jesus, to love someone, you need to trust them. And trust comes with time in relationship and with experience. But our obedience to God needs to be built and developed upon relationship with him. Not religion, not um, dead works, not like an oppressive fear or um, the, the kind of fear that a dictator puts upon people. That, that isn't where our obedience is going to come from or should come from. So, so maybe we need to go back to basics. Start simple. Love God, love others. These are God's greatest commandments, Jesus says. To love the Lord your God and to love others as you love yourself. When asked what the most important commandments are, to God, and there's, if you read the Bible, there's a lot in there. <laughs> Jesus says those two are the most important. So why don't we start there? Let's start this week um, focusing our obedience on those two things. Love God, love others. After the verses I read just then in John, Jesus goes on to talk about the vine and how he is the true vine and how, how important it is to abide in him. Um, and that, that is something I've spoken on in the past. Um, but abiding in him, again, is, is not out of duty or religion, but it's out of relationship. It's out of wanting to know him more, growing deeper in our relationship with him. And from that, the fruit, things that come from that relationship, one of those things is going to be obedience because you're getting to know Jesus and when you know someone you build that trust in them and when you have trust and love then you um, will believe his promises and you'll see the fruit of your um, the fruit in your life from obeying God so God wants our obedience not to, to feed his ego not to be a puppet master but because he knows if we sow to the flesh or we do things that we want to do, that we know are wrong, or we just want to be selfish, we want to um, fulfill our own desires. If we sow to the flesh, do those things, we reap destruction. But God knows if we sow to the spirit, which is following his word, obeying his word, then we reap life we reap truth and we reap true freedom so and that is all explained here in galatians i'm going to read that for you now as well it's going to finish there so in galatians 6 verse 7 it says don't be misled you cannot mock the justice of god you will always harvest what you plant those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. Just to wrap up, just want to summarise. Obedience to God is so important. Not because it's something we have to do and is the way we get into heaven. We know that the only way, the only way, the truth and the life is Jesus Christ. So from that, it's got to be relationship based. We've got to really dig into that relationship with the Lord and from that then obey. So there's going to be things that we think, you know, if we're prompted by the Holy Spirit to do something and we're like, oh. I don't want to do that um, or it's hard or it's difficult or it's, it's confusing or it's challenging and um, there are times when that happens but it's with that trust that we build in relationship 
will be able to stand and say, no, if God wants me to do that, I'm going to do that. And you can trust that you will reap from the spirit, you will reap blessing and you will uh, reap life. So I just encourage us all now to take some time to think of ways and reasons why we might struggle to obey God's word or the promptings of his Holy Spirit. Just take some time, think about what, what you need to say sorry for. What do you need to ask God for his help with? So let's give some time to God now and let him speak into this for us. His heart is always for your good, for your best, for you to enjoy and experience life to the full. And I hope that this message will encourage you to seek after that relationship with him first and to just go back to basics, to love God and love others. And I, you know, I pray and I hope and I believe because I trust in him that you will reap from the Spirit if you do that. So yeah, God bless, have a great week and see you soon.